Learning Advisor from Pearson, and I will be your facilitator for today's webinar. Kindly, um, we'd like to um, make this webinar interactive as much as possible. So whenever you have a question or uh, a comment, uh, feel free to type it in the chat box, which is located at the bottom right, and we'll do my best to answer it um, um, during the webinar or at the end. We'll definitely have a QA session at the end to answer any questions or concern. Um, however, in the meantime, if you have any comments, please don't hesitate to write it in the chat box. Thanks again for joining. Today is for Career Success Program, focusing on the online learning. This is our agenda for today. In Pearson, basically, we believe learning is a journey and not a destination. So um, for most of the students joining college is just um, um, a step in their um, um, uh, learning journey, um, which they can make it successful as much as they want. Allow me to share some statistic with you before we go um, um, in, in this with um, our topic of today. We have 90% of individuals whom we surveyed said that communication skills were one of the most important skills needed to get um, ahead in life. We also have another 90% of uh, um, graduate um, recruiters who ranked 21st century skills as among the top three most important uh, uh, factors in the hiring decision. We've also have 60% of hiring managers say that fresh graduates lack a critical thinking skills. And 50% of managers say that fresh graduates are not ready. What are soft skills? Why everybody is talking about soft skills? Basically, soft skills are intangible skills, are the things uh, which you need as an individual to make things done. Um, we have different skills such as critical thinking, collaboration, time management, communication, social responsibility. We have many different skills that every one of us needed to succeed, um, not only in what they're doing, but basically to succeed in life. In Pearson, um, we call it soft, we call soft skills or 21st century skills, we call it personal and social capabilities uh, skills, which is what you can see in front of you right now, um, is our personal and social capabilities framework. The framework basically consists of um, six different buckets, which we call um, uh, the skills for life. Those skills, um, like we developed uh, uh, the framework to include six different categories based on um, an extensive research we've done to an existing uh, 21st century framework. We've also done a research related to employability skills and labor market intelligence um, to develop a framework which includes the needed skills to get a quality of life. What we did also, we tried to translate those skills into skills beyond uh, uh, um, um, college or beyond daily tasks that either our students uh, working on or us as an employees uh, doing it on a daily basis. What we did, we wanted to have also more focused skills um, called career skills. Career skills are um, skills needed for people to um, um, succeed in managing their career path, skills needed for fresh graduates to know how to plug in different jobs throughout the journey in order to successfully manage their career path. What we wanted to do basically, we wanted to translate these skills into a clear process that our students um, uh, know uh, how to go through it. 
So what we've done, we wanted to, let me take you to the next step. We wanted to help our students and literally carry their hands to make sure they are on the right track, to know how to pursue a career, to know how to build on uh, their marketable skills, to know how to make and the change and adjust a plan, and to choose wisely a career path based on data. So what we wanted to do with all factors that we have, we really want, first of all, to get to get these people into college, to graduate them and to equip them to find a job. So what we found, we found that there is a need to have a, a process, clear process, visible to everyone, um, visible to um, potential employers, visible to students and visible to um, educational system where they can uh, have centralized resources and every parties can access the information as they need it. What we've done basically, we formed our exclusive partnership with Dr. Paul, the CEO of Peak Organization. Dr. Paul is uh, um, um, like uh, the owner of Peak Organization who developed GRIT assessment. GRIT stands for Growth, Resilience, Instinct, and Tenacity. The uh, psychometric assessment assess how gritty are you. It's uh, um, uh, scientifically prov proven that the more gritty you are, the more successful you would be. Uh, actually, Dr. Paul conducted a research and asked in that particular research, conducted a research with more than uh, 2,000 uh, companies and asked people around the world, um, if you have person A who uh, um, has uh, knowledge but lacking certain skills and has uh, person B who is uh, lacking knowledge but have all the skills needed, which one you choose? 99.99 .99 of people say they will choose person B who is equipped with skills. Basically, uh, we have um, more than 137 countries around the world using um, um, our psychometric assessment, which is uh, GRIT. Not only that, we have companies such as Amazon, BMW, they're using this assessment as a, as a, um, as a, a, a psychometric assessment to filter the candidates. Also, the assessment been used in different uh, universities around the world, just uh, such as Harvard, MIT. Um, and we have also a university, uh, an, inst an institution in Jordan. They're using this particular assessment to uh, uh, assess the student capabilities and to see uh, whether to accept them to pursue their um, uh, um, studies in this institution or not based on their GRIT assessment. So GRIT assessment is embedded into the program, which consists of three different phases, discover, develop, and demonstrate. What is discover? Basically, the assessment is start with a self-discovery. Discover who you are. Discover how gritty are you. Discover your personality trait. Discover your work value and work interest. Discover, in a way, your career path. And identify the jobs that you want to pursue. And not only that, discover the techniques to research for the jobs that you want it to apply to. So how do you research for that? Do you go and uh, read a uh, company's profile? Do you go and uh, basically um, uh, look for a job description? What do you do? And then based on that, develop your plan. How to develop a flexible plan? How to develop a plan that gets you to your uh, um, to get the job that you want. If you wanted to get a position in project management and you found out that you're lacking certain skills, so what do you do? Do you have to go and uh, study a course online or do you need to read certain articles or do you, want, do you need to invite people 
um, uh, from the uh, an industry or from somebody who is uh, working on uh, the same position that you want it to apply to? Do you contact them and ask them about what do you need in order to get the job that you want? Not only that, how do you uh, jump to your develop uh, stage? What do you do? How do you develop your personal brand? How do you communicate your personal brand online? How do you make sure that your uh, professional brand is aligned with your personal brand? What do you like online? What do you share? What do you post? All of these techniques that sometimes we really don't pay attention to, we try to make sure we're carrying student hands in order to show them how to gain certain skills in order to have and identify their brand. And not only that, how to build the skills for any career. And then once you're ready, how to jump into the last phase, which is demonstrate. How do, sh how do you show who you are? How do you share your strength online? And how do you attract a um, potential employer to go through your resume, uh, which we will help you, of course, uh, uh, writing it? Um, how do you conduct an interview? How do you pass an interview? And how do you consider your opportunities? The program, guys, which we have basically would allow you to book a session with our uh, with one of our uh, coaches without uh, of course our coaches are icf certified coaches so you would have the chance to um, uh, contact them go through your resume uh basically um, um uh, play a role modeling of a mac inter interview not only that they will help you to ensure that you are able to identify your career path and you're able to identify ways and techniques to go through that path. What we're doing also in Kyrson, we will be launching our uh, very soon, inshallah, we will update you on uh, the date uh, of the course where, where people around uh, um, the region will have the chance to go through uh, the short course take it online and uh, book sessions with uh, our coaches and attend live webinars that will be conducted by mentors to answer your questions and concerns. And um, maybe uh, if you have um, uh, also um, ideas or feedback you would like to share it with us, we'll be happy to hear it. Before we jump into the uh, um, uh, uh, the rest of the features of the program. I'd like to know if you have any questions, guys. All right. Thank you, Mr. Osama. Basically, uh, once as a student or once as a job seeker uh, uh, completed the program, you will have the chance to know how to create an e-portfolio. So we will hand in hand show you how to create an inter, um, an attractive LinkedIn profile. Uh, LinkedIn guys is number one recruiting website. So imagine if you are a fresh graduate applied for a position online, a potential employer, what's, what is he going to do or she's going to do? Uh, I don't know if you know that, but they, they will give you um, um, on a like, um, a range of maximum 12 seconds to scan your resume. Imagine the resume you spend days writing it. You have an opportunity of 12 seconds for somebody to scan your resume and call you for an interview. So you need to have a very attractive resume in order to push this person to go to the next step, which is either searching your name online searching your name on LinkedIn and calling you for an interview. So the program is embedded with interactive videos uh, conducted by coaches to step-by-step -step walk you on how to create an interactive, uh, uh, how to create an attractive LinkedIn profile. LinkedIn profile, as I, as I said, especially for job seekers, is number one 
recruiting website. So maybe you have to, um, in a way, try to make yourself um, uh, or try to have a, an a, a attractive um, uh, profile uh, that makes you stand out in the crowd. So, for example, imagine that um, there are millions of CEOs on LinkedIn profile and they're basically accessing LinkedIn profile almost daily. I can share the, stati the statistic with you later. So imagine that a CEO shared an article or uh, something. So you, you have to know how to comment on these things. It's not only uh, liking articles. You have to know the techniques of sharing your comments. So when you comment on certain article, somebody who is um, maybe an HR person or somebody working in, uh, in a company that found your comment attractive somehow. So he will say, hmm, let's look at this person. Who is he or who is she? Simply he would click in on your name, which will take you, which, sorry, which will take him or her to your page. Here is your opportunity to um, push this person to make an extra step, either refer you to uh, somebody and um, looking for somebody like you or asking his people to contact you for an interview. So basically it's your chance to push the people um, to make an extra step. So LinkedIn profile shall be really, really attractive because you would have the chance to share or to tell your story in your own language. Um, the language basically that is it, which is related to the corporate world and um, help you to uh, share your strength, your skills, and show them who you really are in a very attractive way. Remember, once you go through the program and take a, um, a GRIT uh, assessment, you will be receiving a badge which calls GRIT uh, Level 1. GRIT assessment, guys, basically, um, as I said, it's recognized worldwide and it will show potential employer that you are already self-aware. You know who you really are. And then once you complete the program successfully, you will be receiving a certificate of completion and another badge which says air preparation. If we have somebody from educational system, please note that these two can be customized. Uh, um, and what I mean by customized is we can add your uh, logo or um, your name as well, uh, which you can share it with your students directly. All right. Before we jump into online learning, guys, any questions about career program or career management path? We have one question here from Sam. Do you think that these soft skills should be part of the student's curriculum or taught as an extracurricular activity? It's an amazing question. Thank you, Mr. Osama, for asking this question. My answer, it it's, uh, depends uh, on how do you want it to integrate the skills. Do you have the chance to teach the skills as, an, as a, a standalone course? Uh, or uh, do you want to run it as an extracurricular activities? Basically, we've implemented the program in different institutions in the region. Um, uh, we, we had the chance to Im implement the program using two different methods. Uh, number one, it's a part of the student's curriculum. So they have to attend the skills as a course, a standalone alone course. As Pearson, what we do, uh, we deliver uh, professional development training for uh, the professors or the teachers who will be supervising the course or who will be teaching the course. Um, most of the teachers, of course, they, they are like used to teach courses, but for this particular course, we want to make sure that our teachers are able to wear the facilitator hat are able to teach and assess the skills because here we're not talking about tangible skills we're talking about intangible skills so when we say curricular, um, uh, 
critical thinking or communication, certain skills need techniques to be assessed. So what we do, we make sure that um, our teachers knows, uh, first of all, are well equipped. They have the tools to assess and they know the strategies and techniques to uh, basically deliver uh, 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 the course. Running this as an extracurricular activities, uh, basically uh, we did this with an institution in Saudi Arabia and Riyadh where they meet students um, weekly uh, to go through the skills and have the chance to group the students and uh, work with them on a different skill uh, weekly uh, on a weekly basis so each week they have a skill um, to work on it as they want to make sure that students are engaged in the learning process students are engaged uh, in, in 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 the process of that particular skill because it's very, very important. I'm not sure if you agree with me here, but it's, it's very important to uh, um, engage the students and tell them what are they learning right now. So if we are working on an activity, for example, on um, time management. So we have to tell them, guys, here we're actioning time management skills and teamwork skills, for example. So we need to identify the skills in order for them to start building vocabulary around the skills and um, make them present in a way um, knowing what am I doing right now, which skill I'm actioning. Uh, the reason for that is when, when they later try to apply the skill on different things, imagine they're working on a problem, what we want them to do is to apply the skills that they've been gaining and developing on on um, on that certain problem they are working on it. So they know what they're doing basically. Yeah. Did that answer your question? Shall I take this as a yes? All right, thank you so much, Mr. Osam. What we're gonna do now, we will focus a bit on online learning. Why did we choose online learning? Of course, with what's happening nowadays, everybody is like trying either to um, uh, take an online courses or maybe um, they have to, to go through online learning in order to uh, continue the learning journey for this year. Uh, before we talk about this particular topic, I'd like to ask you the question, which you can see in front of you. Uh, which skill is most important for students to succeed in managing their coursework and the study schedule? Is it one, self-motivation? Is it two, self-esteem? Is it three, flexibility or four, preparation? Uh, please type the number in the chat box. If you believe it's one, just type one. If it's two, type two. If three, type three. And if four, type four. You have one minute to answer. I can see that we have one, one. Come on, guys, go ahead and answer it. It shouldn't be the right one. Whatever you think is right. We have few people answered it so far. So most of you said one, which is basically, thank you so much for answering it. Basically, it's the right answer. Uh, Self-motivation, because um, motivation, as we know, it is... Um, 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 uh, the wheel behind the purpose. So if you lose, um, if you lose your motivation, basically you lost the purpose. Um, it's very, very important for our students and for every one of us who become a student uh, taking any online course to know, to stay motivated and to know the purpose of um, why we're taking this particular course. What's happening now, based on a research, 85% um, 
of people who take an online courses, they don't complete it, which is a huge number. Um, unfortunately, the reason for that, people either uh, um, they don't feel engaged or they lose motivation or um, they don't know why they're taking it. Um, mainly, um, uh, many of them, whenever they find an online course, they go and register themselves in, in, in that course and they start maybe the first session or two and they leave it in the middle because the reason is not really clear for them. They don't know, um, why am I doing this? If we are able to identify the reason, if we're able to know the purpose of me going through this course, I will definitely continue until the end. All right. Let me go through some of your comments in the chat box before I jump into online courses techniques. Motivation rooted from self-esteem. Absolutely. I agree with you. All actually, all four answers are correct. But what is the gear? What is the, 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 the first step in order for students to succeed in uh, online courses is basically motivation. I believe soft skills cannot be taught, rather they can be learned. This is a very important and a tricky point as well. In a way, we can teach soft skills if we allow students to action the skill. If you are able to engage students into the learning process of teaching a certain skill, it means you're helping them developing, gaining uh, that particular skill. Remember, nowadays, what we're doing with different students, um, maybe I can, let me, let me say, not criticize, but give constructive feedback to students about a particular skill. Um, that you're, you're really good, you're very smart, and your GPA is like, 3.5 out of 4, which is amazing, but you're not really good in dealing with your uh, classmate. You're not really good in, in when it comes to working in a project, I don't see you as a team player. Do you call this as a constructive feedback? For me personally, if I receive it, I wouldn't because, okay, then what? Constructive feedback has certain criteria. When you want to criticize what, or you want to give me a feedback on what I'm doing, I need to know what is it, why, and how. So if you are able to give your students uh, or to give learners the how of working on their skills to assess it, first of all, because I need to know where am I right now? Where do I stand? And then uh, how to uh, work about it, uh, how to develop it, how to gain it. It means, yes, you are successfully able to um, teach the skills. Okay. Um, so here we have another feedback, which is all skills are embedded within our students, but our role to help them find the skills and work on strengthening them. Absolutely. Thank you so much, Ms. Maha, for your feedback. Basically, um, uh, what we do, um, especially um, to our learners in the region, we want them to, uh, number one is to identify their skills, to identify what they have and then to move in on capitalizing the, on their strength and uh, developing their area of uh, weaknesses. Uh, not, only on, uh, not only identifying that to them, but also uh, helping them knowing on how to work on that, how to work on their communication skills, how to work on their teamwork skills, and so forth. And then once they, 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 they are done, they completed this, this journey, they would have the chance to reassess themselves, reflect back on what they have learned, and um, know where, where do they stand right now. Did they master these skills? Are they still lacking certain techniques? Uh, sorry, certain skills? Do they need to uh, uh, rework on some of these skills? Because remember, the skills which we identified 
earlier, are the ones which we need as people to succeed in any employment setting, as simple as that. So what we really need to do is to make those people more resilient uh, in order to adapt um, any event, any condition, any circumstances they're going through, it, especially when it comes to uh, online learning. So what we want them to, 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 to actually do is applying the skills they've been, they have been learning in order to be able to continue living their life and um, um, completing the learning journey of the semester. So basically, what do I need to succeed in an online course? What is an online course? <laughs> you all, uh, I guess, know by now is, is a, um, a way of um, a flexible uh, um, environment which we have to deliver the information. Uh, online courses um, can be um, any kind of courses, could be courses on different platforms, could be academic courses, could be courses that we need um, um, to uh, take only for uh, self-learning. Then what do I need to succeed or to complete successfully an online course? We need three different things. Number one is connectivity. Number two is um, basic skills. Number three is attitude. What do I mean by connectivity? Of course, uh, we need a device. We need a computer. Um, we need to have a device between our hands in order to access the course. What else do we need? Uh, we need to have a, a reliable internet, definitely. We need to, to have an access to um, uh, 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 the application or the software which you will use in order to take the course. Nowadays also, we, we need to uh, raise the awareness for the learners and, and on how to um, encounter any technical issues. So for example, we are working now um, uh, delivering a course, but we faced an issue. Uh, we, we, we're trying to um, help those students, number one, not to panic, and know certain steps in order to uh, work on these technical issues. So what if the internet get disconnected? What if um, I'm not able to log in? So it's very, very important what, when I am taking an online course to know that I have uh, I, I know who to contact, I have the support I need, and um, 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 I already tested my connectivity and so forth. Uh, basic skills, definitely, we need the students to know or learners to at least know how to upload, download files, um, um, familiar with, with terminology such as, for example, pop-up window, uh, browser compatibility, um, when we say disable, when we say enable uh, bubble, uh, block, blocker, what does it mean? So we need them to be aware of certain terminology, whether in Arabic or English, by the way. We need them to have the attitude. So um, first of all, it's very, very important for the learners to know what, do, what to expect of this course, uh, to know that they can communicate with the people who are delivering the course online, for example. Um, they are basically motivated enough to continue uh, the course online. Okay. What else? Does it mean online courses are easier than face-to-face -face courses? Does it mean that we will spend less time on online courses than face-to-face -face courses? What do you think, guys? Is online courses going to take less time than on, uh, like traditional kind of courses, the face-to-face -face one? Maybe. Sure. Okay. I can see some of you still typing. So I'll give you the chance to write your feedback.
So it's actually, it needs more to compensate for the direct communication skills. <laughs> All right. Interesting. Okay. Depends, very good. Basically, we have to answer these questions in order to know whether we need more time or less time or equal time. So number one is, um, do you think that uh, you will uh, take longer time to complete an online assignment than a face-to-face -face assignment? Um, based on the information that we have, um, you first of all, you have to complete the online assignment and you have to make the deadline. You have to submit it online. So it's not about um, 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 just working on the assignment. It's about uh, and turning the assignment to your instructor. It's about um, doing the job right, meeting the deadline, and submitting the assignment the right way. So it's it we don't you don't really know whether it's gonna take less or more. However, if you have the proper information, if you know when is the due date, if you know the how, how are you gonna turn this assignment to, to that to your instructor? And if you know what should you do, definitely that might take less time than the face-to-face -face course. Online courses are less rigorous um, um, than on-ground courses. Not necessary. Uh, depends on the subject. Uh, depends on the course. Um, depends on the content itself. Is it easier to be uh, anonymous in, in an online course compared to a traditional course? I, I'd like to hear your feedback on this before I give you the answer. So is it easier to be anonymous in an online course compared to a traditional course? Here it says it's easier to be anonymous in an online course compared to a traditional course. But I'd like to question this. OK, basically, here it comes communication skill. It's actually very, very important not to make yourself anonymous in online course um, because you have to be engaged. You have to ask a question. Um, uh, you have to know, uh, uh, for example, uh, what is required of you. So it's not uh, actually recommended uh, to, to be anonymous. And no, it's not easier to be anonymous compared to a traditional course because instructors or um, a facilitator, they have different techniques uh, to use in order to make sure all audience are already engaged. Um, so it's, um, it's, it's uh, number one, it's equally important. Uh, and number two, it's very, very uh, important to make sure you don't uh, stay as an anonymous student taking an online course. You will have less personal contact with an online instructor. Definitely not. Usually online instructors, they share with you uh, either um, um, contact method and they will also assign uh, office hours. So you can call them during these hours, you can send them an email, you can text them and the clearer your messages is, the faster they will respond to you. Online tests tend to be easier than tests in the traditional courses. Do you think this is true? Is online courses a test is easier than traditional courses? Uh huh. Yes. I have no. I have yes. <coughs> Sorry. Excuse me. Well, Mr. Osama, I think we have to talk <laughs> because it could be supervised. You have different tools to um, um, uh, uh, like stop students from, uh, for example, accessing um, different websites. 
you can lock down the lock down the browser it means they cannot get out of this page they cannot open any other pages on this desktop you can use proctoring techniques and tools where they have to turn on camera uh, they have to show the room and um, uh, it's actually could be more secure than a face-to-face -face test so um, it's 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 definitely could be fully super supervised and uh, it's it's not really necessary to be uh, easier than traditional courses or traditional tests because that uh, depends on um the content itself so what are the guidelines we have for an online communication so it's very very important what we're doing right now as i said at the beginning we want this webinar to be very interactive and it's very very important to make sure that you're allowing either if you are an, an instructor to allow your students to have the chance to participate to make sure that they are engaged although it is yes i agree with you it's harder than the face-to-face -face. however we have different tools and techniques to make sure that we are able to engage those students behind the screen into the learning process. But also for students, it's very important, number one, to show respect. What do I mean by respect? They have also to uh, uh, communicate in a respectful manner. Um, and regardless how they feel about uh, the message or the messenger, it, if they don't like what, what's been saying or they don't like the facilitator, that doesn't should not do anything with, with, with the way you communicate with them. It's very important to ask a question for information and clarification. It's I, I'd like to emphasize on this point for fresh graduate students, uh, educators. It's it's really important for students um, uh, uh, to understand the message and to make sure that they understand it. We have a technique co called use I messages. What does it mean? Um, um, it helps in a way to um, uh, tune down the communication so it doesn't feel like a personal attack. So, for example, if uh, you don't, um, if I said something and you don't understand it right now, uh, you can say I am I am not sure um, I got this particular point. Uh, instead of saying that um, you didn't give me a proper information about it. Just an example. Number four, be aware of a quick emotional reaction and avoid avoid oversharing. So um, it's sometimes difficult to, to hold back your feelings, uh, but you have to exercise yourself um, for something called waiting time. So before composing response, um, it's, it's, it's very, very important uh, uh, to pause, think, and share what you want to say. Because remember, people can't see you face to face. So you have to make sure that uh, you're asking or delivering what you want to say clearly. Also, guys, <laughs> spelling mistakes, grammar, um, sometimes make a, a bad impression. So it's very, very important to uh, follow uh, a clear way of communication with uh, the messenger, uh, with a facilitator or with a teacher to make sure that they get us and they understand what we're asking for or uh, what we want. All right, that's it for our webinar today. I'd like to thank you so much for attending the webinar and um, allow me to know if you have any questions. I'll be happy to answer it. We have a, um, a few minutes, so if you have any question, please go ahead, write it down in the chat box. In the meantime, please scan the QR, so carry your phone, open the camera, scan the QR and provide me with your feedback. Uh, whatever you have in mind, comments, questions, um, requests, uh, anything you have in mind would be happy to um, response to it, or uh, maybe um, arrange for uh, a virtual one-to-one -one meeting to provide the needed support. I'll go through the box very quickly, just in case I missed anything.
here uh, sorry I've missed this comment from I guess Mr. Ayman a part of the soft skills that you previously talked about and also the 21st century competencies students must be guided through digital skills first uh, yes uh, one of uh, basically uh, the skills which we are recommending is um, digital literacy skills um, if you if uh, I'm not sure if you were able to attend the webinar from the beginning but uh, if uh, there is basically um, a framework consists of six different categories those categories consist of many skills uh, categories are translated to 20 different skills um, um, students has to have in order to succeed in whatever they're doing. So yes, digital literacy is one of the most important skills that we want our students and us as um, fresh graduates or job seekers or professional, uh, sometimes we're lacking certain skills. So we need, first of all, to assess what am I lacking and to know how to work on it. Um, so yes, digital literacy, information literacy, how to take a course online, um, um, how to work uh, with, with colleagues. Um, all of these are kind of the skills which we focus on um, as part of 21st century skills for students, which we call soft skills, basically. So if you have any questions, I'm happy to answer it. We'll give you two more minutes to write your uh, answer, uh, sorry, to write your question. All right then, I guess you don't have any questions. I'd like to thank you so much for joining the webinar. Please stay safe and um, stay tuned. We will be sharing um, uh, the webinar schedule very soon for next year and uh, next year, next week. Uh, remember to join our webinars, which will be conducted by um, uh, coaches from the region uh, and uh, experts, uh, which will be talking about very important topics and hot topics um, for uh, uh, um, today's, um, such as online learning, strategies of conducting online sessions, and um, stress management, um, how do uh, how to manage your career path and so forth. So stay tuned, guys. Thanks a lot for joining and have a lovely evening. Take care, everyone.